Today's topic is climate change. Hello, everyone. We are really lucky and fortunate, happy to have with us Professor Jagdish Shukla, who is an international expert on climate change. Over to you, Professor. Okay, I suppose. Um, well, climate change uh, has been referred to as one of the most serious problems facing humanity. And uh, first, I should just explain why it is being referred to as that, because we are faced with a major dilemma. The release of fossil fuels, the burning of the fossil fuels has been the main driver, the engine of growth for our civilization ever since the Industrial Revolution. And uh, we have a much better quality of life now. But now the climate scientists are saying, or have found out, that actually these greenhouse gases are going to be very serious problems for the planet, for civilization. So you can imagine uh, there are many aspects to this question of climate change. You know, we have climate science. What is the science? People have different views about it. Uh, what is the ethics of climate change? Who is releasing it? Uh, what to do about it? What is the policy? What do we do about the policy and politics? Policy is related to the politics. So one can go on on several topics, uh, and I can just touch on each one of them. And uh, of course, you can interrupt me anytime you want to ask. But I really want to end with the hopeful signs, because there are a lot of hopeful signs. There is a little concern about, oh, we are faced with a crisis, nothing we can do. That's not true. So I'll try to explain each one. Well, yeah, time. great. Please explain. And I'm really glad that there is something at the end that is hopeful because otherwise a lot of the talk is just doom and gloom. So let's go through it, Prof. Yes. So let's just go about climate science. You hear a lot about, oh, climate science is complex. We cannot understand. I would like to tell today that climate science is actually easy. It's very easy. It is as easy as understanding why nights are colder than day. And it may sound, oh, really? How can it be? Well, I'll tell you what. In the very class I teach, undergraduate class, I ask them, why nights are colder than day? They all hands go up. Oh, the sunset, sir. There's no sun. And I tell them, you will get a B minus for this answer. And there lies the problem. The students are not educated enough because that's not the full answer. It's really the half of the answer, and it's not even the interesting part of the answer. <laughs> The real answer is that although we talk all the time about sun is heating the earth and sun we are getting the energy, we rarely talk about the fact that earth is losing energy to space all the time. Okay. Only four hours a day. Okay. Okay. And so happens, and it has to happen that way, that on the annual average, the total amount of energy we get from sun is the same as the total of energy earth loses to yes. the space. Yes. And it is the equilibrium between the two energies which defines temperature. In fact, if you say why the temperature of the Earth is 15 degrees centigrade, well, it so happens that at that temperature, it becomes equal. The two energies become equal. Venus is 600 degrees. Why? Because of its CO2 and its distance. So I think science is very easy. It's very clear that the reason we have whatever temperature we have observed which was about 14 degrees centigrade, if you address all the places on the ground, is because we had a steady sort of very small changes in the CO2. We had certain value of CO2, carbon dioxide. Now it has gone up, and in the last 100 years, we have changed it to 15 degrees centigrade. So this 14 degree to 15 degree is really what we call global warming. Okay. And there is absolutely no scientific controversy uh, and I, again, we can go into the politics of it, but uh, that there is any scientific debate about it. it uh, the science has been known for hundreds of years. It has been shown by models. So really, the question is, when there is such a serious implication, how do we solve this problem? How do we actually... Uh, and I think that uh, it's a genuine dilemma. So there's no, no reason to say, oh, these groups are saying this or that. It's a genuine dilemma. We have certain standards of life. We don't want to give up. And there is really, uh, and there is a consequences that are coming much later. They're not coming now. So I think that the, uh, the, the let's just talk a little bit about- but, uh, Let me pose it yeah. this way. What do we want to bequeath to our grandchildren? 
we can <laughs> enjoy life and we can tell them, okay, we did it, but you, we, your life, we messed up. Is that? Uh, See, this is, this is, you have just taken the line I always use at the end of my lecture. Okay. <laughs> when I'm talking to the audience, I say, <laughs> we, the gray-haired people, have created the problem. Yes. And we want our children and grandchildren to solve the problem. Yes. And in a way, but I'm very optimistic about it. That's why we can't solve, because we know the science, we know the technology. I think what is missing is the will to do it. Okay. And uh, and that's where I'm, I'll come to the next topic, which okay. is the, both the ethics and also the politics. Okay. I mean, look at the ethics. Uh, the people of the world who have contributed the least to the problem will suffer the most. Right. That's, that's sort of, that is just so unfair. But not only that, I mean, in each country, you know, the most of the emissions are done by the top 10% of the richest people. Yes. So, in a, as a matter of fact, we have such an ethical problem that uh, and if you come down to internationally, then it gets combined with the international politics. I'll, I'll tell you why. So I know, because I know the people in the Indian government, when the Indian prime minister used to go, I used to know when Manmohan Singh was the prime minister, in an international meeting, and we're talking about global warming, cutting down the emissions, he will show this curve, which along one axis is the human development index, and along the other axis is the uh, energy consumption. And it's very clear that the, uh, the human development index is very strongly correlated with the energy consumption. So there's a very strong argument. Hey, I need to increase the quality of life of my people. Okay. And so, and then you come down to the, the, the total amount of emissions. And there, by the way, again, politics comes in. Because if you look at the actual amount emitted now, China is number one, USA is number two, and India is number three. Yes. Country wise. But Indian Prime Minister can say, but divide it by the population. Yes. And equity demands for capita. Everybody is equal. Well, see, as a scientist, I have a problem with that because atmosphere doesn't know how to do math, right? <laughs> atmosphere doesn't know how to, how, how to divide numbers, right? right? So it is really a, gets felt, whatever the CO2 is. Yes. So I think this is really a dilemma. And uh, that is why for so many years, it hasn't been really, really possible to be able to come up with a solution about this problem. So you have to give credit, and I'll, by the way, everybody may have their own opinion, but the Paris Climate Conference of 2015 was a turning point, okay? Uh, personally for me, it's the best meeting I've ever attended in my life, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we were there as a scientist to answer any questions. Nobody had any questions. Everybody mm -hmm. accepts the science, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these three uh, leaders, I'll say Modi, uh, Z from China and uh, and Obama from White House, they really made a major progress in coming to some consensus. And the world basically, of course, cooperated. And by the way, I was a member of the uh, Indian delegation uh, because I'm a member of the Indian Prime Minister's Council on Climate Change. So right. in Paris, our leader, uh, Environment Minister, will call us and close the door. And first thing he will say, Yesterday, Modi and Obama had a conversation. And this is something that, you know, is, is the, that we really need to see that this Paris Climate Agreement. I'm just saying that was at a very high level. Right. And the countries actually came to an agreement voluntarily. Just imagine, this is the, uh, and you know, we sometimes criticize bureaucrats. The bureaucrats have an amazing role to play. They ask everybody to give their NIDCs. You must have heard the word NIDC. Yes. Yes. National Intended uh, 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 Contributions. Uh, uh, yeah. And you say it's national. They own it by right away. There's no international pricing. Right. Intended means it's your, uh, in your, uh, 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 you know, op uh, opinion. So in short, it's the plan that the country has to cut down emissions. Exactly, exactly. Right. But there's no pressure. No. If the country, if the leaders go back and feel that, oh, Western countries has forced us to do this, then no, nobody will buy that. So anyway, but here comes the question. How do you get international agreement where you have the leaders? And 
when you have this meeting of the leaders, there is a question of development versus consumption. So you have to come to an agreement. So therefore, everybody has to give. But then you come to the countries and the politics becomes so bad. And the United States is the worst example. And you know, Obama had made this agreement. The whole world was so excited. President Trump came. No, we are out of the uh, Paris. Agreement. Yeah. He got yeah. out of the Paris. Agreement. And I tell you, there was such a problem internationally because U.S. has to be the leader to show we're doing something. Otherwise, those countries will do nothing. And they started going down in their commitment. Well, then, thanks God, we had a new elections. And now the first thing President Biden did was that, okay, we will uh, go back to the Paris Club. And now, as we all know, he has actually managed to pass the legislation. Yeah. First time ever. So my point is that... Because Obama couldn't uh, get it through the part, uh, Congress, but Biden did. Well, 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 well. I mean, that's it. You know, we can have a different opinion. I still am not very happy. Obama didn't try enough. Okay. Of course, he had a very good reason. He says, I wanted to get health care yeah. as a high priority. Okay. Yeah. And it was not possible to get two big things done. Right. But on the other hand, uh, from what I have read and I've talked to the people, it could have been done. But anyway, there was a great opportunity lost. But look at the genuine politics. The genuine politics is that there's a fossil fuel industry which has such a hold on the Republican Party. Which has such a, and so entire climate change debate in USA is now divided based on ideology, right. not on science. Do you see? This is this is the dilemma. This is really a dilemma. So what what do we do? Uh, and uh, I mean, can you imagine? Here is something scientifically the whole world agrees. There's one particular part of the U.S. Congress that nobody is willing to speak a word. <laughs> so 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 it's just. Uh, and of course, in my class, I always ask students, "Hey, I'm from India. I don't know why. Why don't you guys tell me?" Yeah. And they all feel it's the fossil fuel industry. They gave money to the contributions to the to the politicians, and, yeah. but now it has gone beyond that. It has become almost a trade, you know, ideology that it has to be. Yes. So it's a problem it's still. That's why we are not able to make you know the, we, we, as rapid a progress that that we can make. But I think we are making good progress. And I'll tell you uh, before. Uh, uh, I mean, I've had, I mean, you can interrupt me anytime. But let me just give you a couple of examples of why. Oh, please give the examples. They're very yes, helpful. Yes. Why I am so hopeful. Well, first of all, you see, the fact that society listens to scientists. There is a very good example in the past. Say, for example, uh, ozone hole. Ozone hole was really, you know, very much dominated by the by the industries which do the aerosol and yes. HFCs, and uh, they agreed to cut down. Yes. To be to be to be candid, of course, they agreed only after they found a way to yes. do it with, yes. without without actually doing so. <laughs> that's, that's there, and that's what we are trying to do now for climate change. I mean, the vaccine. Let me just see how quickly the science developed the vaccine, saved millions of people. I mean, the fact that there is a, again, there is a difference of opinion that this human sort of uh, nature, we can't do anything about it, but imagine. It. So we are very hopeful, and I'll say the Paris Climate Conference was the first good example. Then immediately after that, there was an agreement, Kigali agreement, by the way, for ozone. All the countries have agreed uh, that they will cut down uh, and make, make an agreement. Biodiversity. All the countries agreed on a biodiversity agreement to save certain percentages of forest and, uh, and and this. But then now I think that uh, they they have been asked to accelerate there and look at the action that is taking place. So three different levels: national level, okay, and some countries are pushing so much that other countries feel the pressure. Europeans, Europeans are way ahead of us, by the way. Yes. So so they they do that. But look at the even in our country, although even during Trump time, the cities, governors, and yes. mayor, they had their own plan. They had them. their own plans, yes. Okay. Now every industry, financial industry, the financial industries came to the Glasgow meeting and they said, you know, hundreds of trillions of dollars of investment they are going to consider the global change is one of them. 
uh, factors. So there is, things are happening at the national level. At individual level, you know, in 2019, 20, in the world, I don't know how many millions of people took part in protests and representations. People, this is playing a big role. The, the politicians need that kind of pressure from society. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is happening. Every university, I mean, my university say, oh, we have our climate plan. Yes. Uh, uh, every organization has now its own climate plan. Okay? Right. Well, maybe, maybe in the states that you and I are in, but in other states, it's going the other way, right? No, no, but it's still, I mean, in those states, many of the universities and organizations are, but you're right, there's some states which are, and uh, the, uh, but I'm just totally surprised by the people's commitment you know, people are changing diets. And you know, by the way, I mean, if people become vegetarian, half of the problem will be solved, but right. it's not going to happen. There are action, people are taking action. And I think that they are, they are doing changing habits, but the most important thing which people need to do, I'm just saying you that, they really need to elect leaders, right. climate liter, climate literate leaders. So the reason I told you in the beginning I'm optimistic is because, look, we know the properties of this molecule, okay, CO2, okay, yes. we know it. Uh, and younger generation is very smart, is working on it. And in I mean, anyway, we have scared a lot of them. By the way, do you know that anxiety, climate anxiety has become a major problem? I did not know that. In the younger generation. I no, see. there are books written, there are, there are people's lectures and... And I, I realized myself three years ago, because in my class for the global warming, we used to emphasize too much on the impacts. Yeah. And the, some of the students after the class started saying, Professor, we're really developing a lot of anxiety. I see. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, and then I realized, so by the way, in the last four years, I have changed my, uh, my course to end with several lectures on hopeful science. Okay. Uh, climate solutions. Yeah. And so I would really like to end. Uh, I, as you say, you can, you can, uh, you you can ask me any questions. But some very simple things individuals can do. Talk to your neighbors. If you if you understand, because a lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, there are some experts who believe that it's going to be very hard. You know, the the famous Nobel laureate Yale. I forget who wrote the fast mind, slow mind. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I forget his name. Uh, he has made a statement that this is a very difficult problem to solve in democracy. Yeah. And the reason is that you can do all the science. Hundreds of people can do the science. And a couple of guys will come and simply say, ah, we're not sure. Yeah. So, so far as public is concerned, it becomes 50-50. Right. This is this is and this is the fossil fuel industry is really this is their game plan. Create doubt. I mean, there is so much record that to show that that was your plan to create doubt. Right. right. So the doubt has been created. You, uh, many times I'm surprised in a barber shop or what do you do as a climate? Oh yeah, I heard there are two opinions about it. This <laughs> is, oh this is <laughs> I said obviously me as a climate scientist. I've yeah. Heard the doubt. Yeah. But anyway, but we really, uh, I mean, I'm personally optimistic and I think we should be optimistic. I think we can take care of the problem. Okay, but you were going to say, apart from talking to the neighbors, you were going to add some other point or what? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, definitely our work habits. Yeah. You know, how do we turn, you know transportation yeah. is one of the biggest contributions. Okay? Yes. Uh, the, you know, the driving, I mean, you know, sort of the, 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 uh, 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 the uh, travel, our diets. Yeah. Uh, many people have been saying, what what kind of shopping you do? You know, sort of how do you uh, take care of... Uh, the reason I don't like to push that too much is because no matter how much of that you do, still you need a very serious action at the government level. Yes. At the top level. Okay. So, but do you ever... Think of adaptation that look, some climate change is inevitable, maybe, and then we have to adapt. And what about that? Oh, oh, absolutely. I didn't really talk about this because to, to so far as it's not inevitable. It has already happened. Okay. And we are doing adaptation. 
Okay. Ra, Ra. We're doing adaptation. And I think that, uh, I mean, this part, I didn't go into that. One of the big research projects for us in climate science is to build our models with such high resolution and such greater accuracy that we can give advice about how to adapt in the future. Okay. Do you have any so, advice now at this point? Any suggestions which are preliminary maybe, but do you have something coming out right? Yet? Well, I, by the way, I mean, I personally uh, uh, don't work on, but as I said, uh, people in their day to day lives, I mean, see, right now the adaptation is really at the municipality level, okay, municipality level, district level, at the state level, because they have to take those, uh, you know, every time they approve a new construction near the, the, the sea, then that's where it can really make an effect. Okay. People, I just I say individuals, I think very large number of people are already have adapted and adapting. I mean, look at the increase into the into the solar power, into the okay. houses. Look at the increase in the 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 fuel, you know, sort of the electric cars, yeah. which are expensive. But I find people are trying, trying to uh, uh, do whatever they can do, okay. and which is which is a very good sign. Okay. You want to add something else here, or we are about to end this now? Well, I, I just thought in case you feel there is anything that, uh, that uh, uh, I mean, you know, my my real problem uh, is with India. So yeah. since, since you may have people in India and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, people will not like it. But one of the biggest problem I have in India is that India is just somehow has taken a position that we must live coal. We cannot talk about coal. Yeah. But next... 20 years, 30 years, whatever. Right. Cannot talk right. about That's such a bad place to start. Okay. And now, of course, if you look at the media, news media, uh, people are saying, well, some of the coal industry titans have a big influence on politics. Uh, we don't know uh, yeah. whether it's true or not. But no, I think that if there is one thing that India could show the leadership is really in giving an example. India doesn't have to follow China's path and keep building, you know, coal-fired power plants week after week, and uh, uh, so it is a new, new kind of model. I, I, you know, I, I'm not an economist, so I can talk about it. It's a wishful thinking. Okay. India had the opportunity to show the world there is a new model where you can take care of both, meet meet people's needs, but at the same time do it sustainably. Okay. Can I change the topic? I know you have been working in your village or hometown doing some good work could you tell share it with us oh yeah well that's that's something i'm so so proud of uh, what is happening and i'm so happy to share uh, because you know uh, being member of all these committees of india and internationally i used to fly around all over the world and every time i'll stop by in my village you know i haven't been in this country for 50 years but i've visited my village 100, 100 times the village is in which state is in it's district balia Ah, which is the easternmost district of UP. Right. One of the most backward, you know, sort of uh, right. infamous. That's where uh, Chandrasekhar came from as a prime minister. Right. And uh, uh, in the... Uh, so uh, I think that my mother said, what are you doing? about? What have you done about the village? And, you know, I thought, my God, that's true. Yes. So many years ago, I asked, I formed a committee and I said, what can we do? And... And funny part is that if you meet the villagers, you say, what is the problem? They will say, corruption is the problem. Yes. Every, for everything, corruption is the problem. And then when I start going into the details, okay, how about do it? Then I find they are quite an integral part of the corruption themselves. <laughs> they are quite willing to actually yeah. tolerate yeah. when it comes to the welfare talking. Yeah. Finally, I came to the conclusion that, you know, I know something about education. My village had no primary school, by the way. When I was going to primary school, yes. uh, my primary school was under a tree, banyan tree. Right. And my father was the one who built a primary school. Okay. You know, there was no the building. School. So they had a school, but no building. Uh, no, no, they had a school, right. It was like, the building was built like by the time I went into the third or fourth grade. And uh, I said, you know, we know something about education. I'm a teacher. Let's just do so education. And then I found out that the girls in the village High school is easy because there are many high schools, but there are no colleges. Yes. 
So my wife and I decided to make some donation. We started giving some small percentage of our income and established this college called Gandhi College. Yes. And it had only one theme. Educate, of course. I wanted all girls, but they say, no, no, there will not be too many girls. Yeah. But which was wrong. Uh, girls are much better growing. So 80% are girls. So we have about 1,000 students, and uh, which is considered to be small because my committee is pushing me to do more. But I said, no, no, just maintain the quality and have the number. So it's, it has a bachelor's degree and some master's degree. Okay. So it is more like an example rather than, you know, there's no science because I cannot find science teachers. You know? Right. Okay. And no, no, no. But I have put internet, I have put solar, you know, so mm -hmm. you can do certain certain things on this. Mm -hmm. It's very, very nice. It's nice to see the every year I visit. I mean, these girls have such a self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, they have heated discussions about dowry system and do and uh, but uh, but you know, some things still continue. When I go to the classroom, all the boys are on the left side, all the right. girls are on the right side. Right. They can't sit, they cannot sit. Yeah. And uh, when I ask one day to the boys, when you go home, what? how do you help your family? None of them raise their hands. When I ask girls, all of them raise their hands. Right, right, right. right, right. They do the cooking and so yeah. on. So, no, yeah. so this has been uh, this has been a very, uh, very, you know, kind of uh, uh, satisfying. Okay. Kind of no, I'm glad. You know, and is it on now uh, financially sustainable or does it still need your support? It is now. It is. I think it is financially sustainable. I'm trying to, uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to also create some corpus fund yes. so that it can, because uh, I never want them to go the path that many, many other colleges have gone. We are charged exorbitant fees Yes. so that uh, I make it just for profit, not yes. for education. Yes. Uh, so, but I think it is, uh, it, 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 it is becoming uh, quite self-sufficient. Okay, well, that's great. I think we can end it here. Let's say bye to the viewers. And I'm so thankful to you to stay, spare the time and come and talk to us. I know it has been tough for me to find you, but finally we have done it. And so bye everybody. I'll be back next time with another expert or another young person. Bye-bye.